Hey everyone, Kyle Mike here from MLive.com, joined by Justin Rogers. Uh, Lions are getting back at it this week after the bye, Justin, and, and they're looking healthy. Um, Calvin John Johnson is, is back. He said today he will play against mm -hmm. the Dolphins. He practiced as well. And we saw Joseph Fourier also at practice. Eric Ebron was running on the side. Uh, he'll be back, uh, I would say, within a, within a couple of weeks or so. And I think it's going to be uh, very soon when we can see the, the, the full-fledged attack. Um, what's your take on, on the offense finally coming together after all these injuries? Yeah, I mean, we saw it a little bit in the first three weeks of the season. Um, Calvin Johnson was healthy during that stretch. Obviously, the right tackle situation was a little bit more in flux there. Later in Waddle should also be back this week. Um, you know, I, I think we still don't know what we've got uh, in, in terms of, you know, what what we've seen from this offense. Uh, they, they exploded. They, they really exposed the Giants, but the Giants were also playing pretty poor football at that mm -hmm. time. They didn't do much against Carolina. They didn't do much against Green Bay. Calvin was held under 100 yards in both those games. So, you know, it still remains to be seen. I think we saw at least Matthew Stafford get a little bit more comfortable with some of his other weapons while Calvin, while Calvin was out. So yeah. um, th they should be a diverse attack. I just I don't know if they're going to explode against a pretty good Miami defense. Jim Caldwell was asked today about what getting back Calvin Johnson does for your offense, and I I kind of smiled to myself because what are you going to say? I mean, the guy's the best receiver in the game. Of course, he's going to be great for the offense, and you, you miss him when he's not there. More interesting to me was talking to some players today about how having Kelvin Johnson on the field affects the defense, the other team. And I think that's something they've missed as well and has kind of Absolutely. gone overlooked a little bit because of all the struggles they've had with just finding guys to produce. But when Kelvin's on the field, he, he sucks coverages his way. Uh, the, 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 you know, um, Reggie Bush was saying they'll watch a defense on film and play in other teams. And then when they go to play them, these defenses do very different things to the, to the Lions because they have the unique talent in Calvin Johnson. So getting a guy like that back can help free up, say, the running game. And that, that's Reggie Bush's hope. That's the biggest concern with this offense right now is, is this 31st ranked rushing attack. Um, the hope is that getting a guy like Calvin back and, and you have Adrian Waddle coming back, those things could help get the offense going and specifically the running game. Yeah, you know, especially with the safeties. You know, Calvin Johnson's going to draw the safeties away. Almost every defense for the last three, four years, we've seen two high safeties. They, they keep them way far back from the yep. line of scrimmage, 15, yep. 16 yards. You know, it's it's still imperative on the offensive line to, to get to the, the linebackers and put a body on them in the second level. That's what Dominic Riola told us last week. That's been a problem this year. Uh, the running back stuff to do a better job of making tacklers miss, yards after contact stuff they haven't done this season. Uh, but another area that could help them is is the passing game with the running backs. You know, that mm -hmm. that short yeah. area underneath is going to be open to where, where Reggie and, and Joik and, and Theo, Theo Riddick. Riddick could step forward and, yeah. and thrive against a, you know, a really good pass rush from Miami. I would look to see more from Theo Reddick in the coming weeks. I think that's an opportunity he's earned, and Jim Caldwell was asked about it and some players. And, and I mean, even Calvin said he really loves watching Theo Riddick play football, you know, and I think he's got some ability. Um, he does kind of the same things as Reggie. I think Reggie's, I think Bush still has more of a home run threat. That's just not something we've seen so far this year. And I think Theo, at this point, is better than Reggie Bush in some ways, including with his catch radius and his hands and so forth, and just getting his hands on the ball and we saw that with that one-handed grab on the on the on the um the game-winning drive against atlanta i mean he can just he can catch the football and i think that's an asset when you do have a guy like kelvin johnson coming back and you're going to have spaces around the line of scrimmage for for passes we saw it all the time in practice leading up to the season you know we we wrote pretty extensively on theoretic um it, it wasn't a false bill of goods but the team still couldn't manage to find him him snaps or reps early in the season uh, when when both Bell and Bush were healthy, why do you think that is? I don't know. I, I've I'm, wondered that quite a bit. I, I just I don't I don't have an answer. I don't know. I think the simplest answer is, uh, you know, they just didn't have enough offensive success to create the necessary reps to get multiple guys, uh, you know, plays. You look yeah. at uh, New Orleans, where where Joe Lombardi came from, they find a way to get three backs involved pretty consistently throughout the game. But that's a really efficient offense, and and Detroit's not there yet. So yeah. maybe with an increased efficiency, they'll find a way to get three guys more involved. I'd, I'd like to see more two back sets. I went through all their different formations they used, and I think that they only had a combination of two run, running backs, non fullback situations, yeah. like eleven snaps this year. I think it'd be interesting to see Joik and, and Theo out there, or Reggie and and Joik out there together, um, especially if they both run routes. It's it, that's a a, a formation that'll really stress the defense. I'd love to see. I haven't looked it up. Maybe I should, but I'd love to see the number of drives the Lions have 
of, of five or six plays or fewer and compare that to the league because I think it'd be extraordinarily high because they do have some of these 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 clock churning game winning drives uh, in the second half but this offense has been stuck in neutral in, in the first half I'm just having trouble sustaining drives and you're right you get less opportunities for guys when you're only snapping the ball four times and you're punting I, the one other thing I want to see with with Calvin back in the lineup is is how it impacts Golden Tate. He's obviously coming off a monstrous stretch. He stepped up in in the biggest way imaginable uh, with with Johnson sidelined. Uh, now he's going to see, you know, the number two cornerback instead of the number one quarterback. He's not going to see the double coverage. You know, Stafford's obviously going to be focused on getting Johnson the ball and, and feeding the best you know receiver in the game as we mentioned, but. Uh, Tate should have more favorable matchups, so you know he's going to be a, a key piece down the road. And I want to see how they start with this week with with that matchup with Cortland Finnegan. I expect Tate's overall numbers to go down just sure. because the targets are going to go up for, for Johnson. But you're right; I think he'll have better opportunities. That's something we saw early when Calvin was in there against the Giants. Golden Tate had several good opportunities in, in one-on-one matchups, and I think that's something that because Golden was seeing. He even said he saw a lot more double teams the past couple of weeks. Well, he's not going to see very many double teams, I don't nope. think, going forward, and that's a good thing for Golden Tate. Maybe not good for Golden Tate fantasy owners, but a good thing for Golden Tate and for this offense, which needs all the help it can get um, with all the struggles they've had and then playing a really good defense this week in Miami. I mean, he was brought in here to be a, a compliment. If, if he averages six catches for 80 yards or in you know that ballpark, that's still really good season. You're talking near 100 catches, well over a thousand yards for your second receiver. So, you know that's that's type of production. I think you you should still be happy with if you're a Lions fan if, if Tate's putting up those kind of numbers. That's what we got. Uh, Lions getting healthy coming off the bye as you'd expect, and uh, should be should be f- near full strength. I think uh, Sunday against the Miami Dolphins. For Justin Rogers, I'm Kyle Munkey. We are M Live. Keep it right here.